Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're going to be making perfect chocolate chip cookies. A lot of folks have trouble with cookies. They can't get them to come out quite like they want them. So I'm going to share all the things that I have learned over the years from every burnt or flat cookie I've ever made. And maybe some little tips for getting them just the way you like them and all the mistakes that everybody makes. I'm going to tell you how not to make them. Chocolate chip cookies are a very basic recipe. You could add a lot of other stuff to them if you want to. Certainly you could add nuts to them, walnuts, pecans, just about any kind of nuts you wanted. But today we're making plain chocolate chip cookies and there's nothing quite as good as a gooey chocolate chip cookie. So what you need is chocolate chips. Now I use three cups of chocolate chips in mine. That's about a bag and a half. Two eggs. I use three quarters of a cup of white sugar three quarters of a cup of brown sugar, packed, about two and a quarter cups of plain or all-purpose flour, and I do use unbleached, a cup of butter, which is two sticks, and a teaspoon of baking soda, and about three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of vanilla. Now I'm going to get these started, and then we're going to talk about all the ingredients and kind of why I choose those. We're going to start by creaming our sugar and our butter together. Now, I don't use my stand mixer a whole lot, but if you have a stand mixer, it certainly makes cookie baking easier. Um, a lot of times I think a stand mixer just isn't worth the trouble of cleaning it up, but when you're making cookies, it's worth the trouble. So if you've got one, pull it out for this. You can mix these with a hand mixer or you can hand mix them with just, um, I'd recommend starting with maybe a potato masher or maybe using a potato masher all the way through because you have to get this butter and sugar really well incorporated and it would be a little hard to mix them I think with anything less. You're certainly not going to mix them with a whisk. So let's get this creaming. Now you do want to scrape your bowl at least once or twice when you're doing this because um, it's obviously going to slop it kind of up on the sides of the bowl and it's not really going to get creamed good if you don't. And this is important for having a really good cookie. Okay, now I'm just going to let it mix a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to scrape mine one more time. The brown sugar in this, you can use light brown or dark brown sugar. I had light brown on hand, so that's what I'm using. Um, the molasses in the brown sugar is what makes the cookies chewy. So you can increase the ratio of brown sugar to um, white sugar, and you can also by using the dark brown sugar, your cookies will be a little bit chewier. So if you like a chewier cookie, definitely use dark brown sugar. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and dump my eggs in here and my vanilla. And I usually do a generous teaspoonful of vanilla in my chocolate chip cookies, which means you spill a little extra. <laughs> and I'm going to give that just a little bit of a beat to beat my eggs up. Then I'm going to scrape my bowl and mix my eggs and my sugar and my butter together. Now that that's all kind of mixed together, I want to add my salt and my baking soda and my flour. 
Now, I use right at three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, at, but I had salted butter. You can use salted or unsalted butter. If you have unsalted butter, you might want to add just a tiny bit more salt. You might want to use a full teaspoon, but then again, you might want to adjust it a little bit and take some of the salt out. It's kind of a matter of taste preference, but you do need at least a half a teaspoon of salt per batch of cookies with what's in your butter and what's in your flour. So kind of keep that in mind when you're adjusting it. Start this on low. And if you're using a hand mixer, you know, one that you do this with, start it with your spoon. Don't hit that with a hand mixer with the regular beaters on it. Okay, once the flour is in there pretty good, scrape your bowl again. And I know that seems like a lot of bowl scraping, but I promise with a stand mixer, it's a whole lot easier than it is doing it by hand. Okay, now I'm just gonna mix this up one more time real good. Now I'm going to clean off my um, paddle here on my mixer, and then I'm going to stir in my chocolate chips. Now this you do want to do by hand, because if you use this stand mixer on them, that paddle is going to pin the chocolate chips between the paddle and the edge of the bowl, and it's going to crush them all up. Now your dough should be really stiff at this point. And this is gonna be a little hard to mix um, if you're doing it by hand. And that's why I said, that's why I always dig out my stand mixer for this job. When cookie baking season rolls around, the stand mixer comes out. All right, once you're sure you've got your chocolate chips pretty well incorporated and evenly distributed, then it's time to scoop out your cookies. I highly recommend buying a cookie scooper to make chocolate chip cookies with. If you don't have one, you can use a couple of tablespoons and you can scoop them out and kind of round them. You can even use your hands to round them. But if you shape the cookies into a ball before you, well, you're gonna put them in the fridge, but if you shape them into a ball before you put them in the fridge, it makes them come out much better. It actually affects the way they bake and the texture. Now, you can put your dough, just take your dough out of your bowl and scoop it into an airtight container and put it in the refrigerator and then you can shape it after it's been in the refrigerator for a couple hours. But what, as stiff as this is now, once you put it in the refrigerator, it's gonna be a whole lot stiffer, which means it's gonna be a whole lot harder to scoop. And what I like to do is I scoop mine out now while it's soft. Then I put it in a bag and I use a freezer bag to help keep the smells out of it. Just scoop it out on a piece of wax paper, slide it in the freezer bag, put it in the refrigerator for about two hours. Like I said, you can do it. You can just put your dough in a bowl or just cover this bowl, put it in the refrigerator for a couple hours and then scoop it out and bake it. But it's much easier to do it now. And if you do it now, if company shows up, which company tends to do around the holidays, especially that week before Christmas and the week between Christmas and New Year's, there's always folks dropping by. And if you've got a bag of homemade cookie dough in your refrigerator, you can have fresh hot homemade cookies to serve your guests that drop by in less than 10 minutes. Now I have two different cookie scoopers here. Um, this one is about twice the size of this one. And the size of the scooper is gonna, of course, determine the size of your cookies. It's also gonna make the baking times vary and stuff like that. And with every oven, the baking time is gonna vary. I bake mine in a 350 degree oven. You might have to turn your oven all the way down to 325 to keep them from burning. And it takes about eight to 10 minutes to bake a cookie in my oven. 
So kind of base what you're making the cookies for on the size of the cookie scooper you buy. Um, if you were just going to be serving cookies with coffee um, or maybe taking them to work, I would do the bigger ones. If you're making them for a kid's party, I would do the littler ones because these big cookies are going to come out so big that they're going to be a good snack, you know, for if you were doing co cookies and hot chocolate or cookies and coffee or something or taking them to work for everybody to share them or Sunday school. I'd do big ones if I was going to take them to a Sunday school class to share with everybody in Sunday school. But it's much easier to do this with a cookie scooper than it is to do it with a couple of spoons or shape them individually with your hands or anything like that. It goes really fast. And of course with a smaller scooper you're going to get a lot more cookies out of a batch of chocolate chip cookies. The big ones, mm, I want to say maybe three dozen per batch. The little ones, as many as five dozen per batch. So again, base the size of, or pick your cookie scooper based on how many cookies you need. Um, if you're doing them in a gift box, maybe make some fudge and some cookies and put them together in a gift box to give to folks. I would probably do the smaller ones because if you don't do the smaller ones, you're not only going to get cookies in your gift box. And after you do a few, they are going to stick to your cookie scooper. And honestly, I usually use my hands to get them off. Um, you're not going to bake cookies or make candy and not get your hands in it. But you can see here, I have five big ones and six little ones in this row. So that gives you some idea of the difference in the amount, the amount of dough with the big scooper versus the little scooper. And we're going to bake some of these up and kind of show you what they look like. The biggest tips I can give you or when you start baking cookies for the Christmas season or any other time of the year when you're going to be baking quite a few cookies, make sure you have a fresh box of baking soda. Even if your baking soda is in date and you know you've got it up in your cabinet and you haven't used it, you've only used a little bit out of it, open a fresh box. It's fairly inexpensive and you can always use that leftover baking soda for cleaning. You can put it in your refrigerator to help keep the smells from other foods out of your chocolate chip cookie dough you have stored in there. I mean you can still use it but don't use it in your cookies because if your baking soda is bad you've wasted all those other ingredients. All the chocolate, all the sugar, all the flour and grocery prices right now are just too high to waste that much food. Um, the, the other big thing to make sure they come out is certainly put them in the refrigerator first. Even though these are nice round balls, if we put them straight into the oven and bake them, they're going to spread out and flatten out and you're not going to get that thick, gooey, delicious chocolate chip cookie that you're looking for. You're going to get a little flat, thin thing that just isn't a homemade chocolate chip cookie. And that also, um, that time in the refrigerator, it not only stiffens them up, but it lets the dough rest. And we have talked about uh, quick breads, pancakes, biscuits, all that stuff, how they're better if you let them rest for just a few minutes before you start baking them. Well, the same thing is true with cookies. You don't want to mix them up and then immediately put them in the oven. So you know how to scoop them now. Once you get them all scooped out, like I said, just slide them in this bag and put them in the refrigerator. You can store them in the refrigerator for at least two weeks. Um, I've actually had them stored in there longer than that. So here pretty soon you can start making up all your cookie dough for all through the Christmas season. And you know, if you've got this mixed up, it's really easy 
to make your guests a fresh tray of homemade chocolate chip cookies, even if they pop in unannounced. Then you just put this bag in the freezer, in the fridge, no, freezer, fridge. Put your bag in the fridge. After they've been in the fridge, they're gonna be nice and solid. There's some big ones and here's my little ones. But once they've been in the fridge and when company drops by, all you have to do is what you do with those pre-made refrigerator cookies that you buy in the store. You just take them off and put them on a cookie sheet. Now, I do recommend parchment paper when you're making cookies. I didn't use it most of my life. I probably discovered it about six or seven years ago. Parchment paper not only makes it super easy to clean up your cookie sheets and keep them clean, but it actually keeps the bottom of your cookies from burning. So if your oven maybe isn't great, put parchment paper on your cookie sheets and it will help keep your cookies from burning. Parchment paper is different than wax paper. You don't want to use wax paper for this. And you can kind of maybe see the difference. I'm not sure if you can tell the difference on camera or not. Usually wax paper is white. This just happens to be brown, but it does actually have a wax coating on it. You don't want to bake your cookies on that. You want parchment paper. And all you do is lay your cookies on the parchment paper, preheat your oven 350 degrees, spread them out, give them a little room to grow because they are going to get bigger, especially if you're doing the big cookies. Um, usually the big cookies, I only bake six to eight on a cookie sheet at a time. And I make those when, like I said, just a few people are stopping by and maybe we're going to have a cup of coffee and a cookie because it's enough of a snack to kind of help take the edge off if folks are hungry. Maybe they were headed out to dinner or something and they stopped by on the way, or maybe it's way after dinner and it's starting to get late in the evening and people are starting to get a little bit hungry again, but they don't want a meal. The big ones are great for that time of the day. The smaller ones, you can put about a dozen on a cookie sheet. I wouldn't try to do any more than that because you do want to keep them spaced out a little bit. You want to give them a little room to grow. Well, I've got 15 on here, so you know, that's plenty. Give them a couple of inches, like I said, so they got a little bit of room to grow. They are going to spread out a little bit, but putting them in the fridge is going to keep them from being super flat. And then put them in a preheated 350 degree oven. Okay, our cookies are out of the oven. Now this is some of the bigger ones, not the smaller ones, like we just put on the cookie sheet. You wanna cook them until they are slightly brown all around the edges. Even the top should be starting to get brown. You can still mess your cookies up. Even after you get them out of the oven, even if you don't burn them, there's still time to mess them up. When you take them out of the oven and you sit them down on the countertop, sit them down very easy because these are like the cakes that your grandma used to yell at you over. If you slam them down, they'll fall. You know, she wouldn't let you open the oven door. You get yelled at if you went running through the house, you're gonna make the cake fall, stop it. Well, your chocolate chip cookies will do the same thing. If you slam them down, they will fall. So take them out of the oven, let them sit on the pan, on the parchment paper for at least a minute. That gives them time to kind of set up, firm up, and then they won't fall and end up being that flat little, ugh, I don't even know what those are. Flour does make a difference. Now, like I said, I used unbleached flour and I always use unbleached flour. The more processed flour though, the lighter and fluffier the cookies are gonna be. Um, I prefer either Pillsbury or White Lily. King Arthur is also good. Uh, I don't know if I should say this or not, but I don't ever use gold metal flour in my cookies especially. I don't usually use it ever. 
it's more coarse and it's not as light and as fluffy and I don't ever get the right texture when I'm baking with gold metal flour. Um, I, I don't know what it is about it. I know other people have success with it. I do not. Um, you don't have to be super brand specific, but I do use Pillsbury, I do use King Arthur, and I do use White Lily, and I like all those brands, and I always get pretty good results with them. I do normally, for my Christmas cookies, for some reason use Pillsbury, and I honestly think it was good advertising when I was a kid. I had one of the little Pillsbury Doughboy dolls that they gave away years ago. Maybe that's why, but it does make a good cookie. Okay, now our cookies have been sitting here for about a minute. And after about a minute, you wanna transfer them to a wire rack to let them finish cooling. And you can serve them now. After one minute, you can serve them. If you're giving them to little kids though, wait a little bit longer because those chocolate chips in there are gonna be so hot that they will cause blisters. So little kids, give them maybe five minutes before you serve them to a little kid. You don't wanna have a burned mouth for Christmas. That's not fun. And that would kinda of end your Christmas party. Or even, I've seen kids drip them and on their chin and oh, it makes a mess. So little kids, let them cool five minutes or so. Adults, you can serve them after a minute. Do warn folks, let them know they're hot but they are soft, they are gooey, and they are loaded with chocolate. And that's what you want in a chocolate chip cookie. And they'll stay this thick. They won't flatten out and be super, super flat. And sometimes they even come out a little bit thicker. I don't know why sometimes they come out a little thicker and sometimes they don't. But if you follow those tips, they won't be super flat and they won't be super hard. Give some homemade cookies a try this year. Um, like I said, good ingredients. Make sure that baking soda's in date. Don't slam them down when you put them on the countertop. And they'll come out perfect. And you will save a ton of money making them yourself. And you won't have to worry about wasting ingredients if you know how to make them. And everybody should know how to make them now. And your kids will absolutely love these if you've never done it. Give them a try. They really is a simple recipe and it really is not that hard. We're getting very, very close to Christmas. Like I said, it's almost time that you could go ahead and mix up all your cookie dough and keep it in the refrigerator for when company stops by. And I usually do that around the middle of December. I'll make a couple batches of cookies, put them in the fridge so that I have them. And then on toward Christmas, I'll make a couple more batches so that I have them through New Year's. But while we're all running around giving gifts and trying to make sure everybody's taken care of, I wanna leave you with 1 Corinthians 13, 13 and a little thought about that verse. Now abide faith, hope, and charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. And charity, most of you know, is translated as love, but it's love and giving. It's how we care for one another and Everybody's heard that saying, you can't take it with you. Well, a thought occurred to me recently. We have something here that we can take with us when we go. And it's what we give away. It's the love that we give away. It's the acts of generosity that we show other people. Even the material things that we give away, that's how we show our love for one another. And that is what we can take with us. So while you're giving gifts and while you're sharing all the blessings with, that you have with all the people that you love, don't forget to give something away to help build your riches in heaven, not just here on earth. I wanna thank y'all so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen, and I hope you are abiding in faith, hope, and charity this season. If you have not already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first.